information. Uh, you know, you do. You know. Yeah. No, that one away. Yeah, it's one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really focus today. I'm not gonna let it catch me. Good evening. I would like to call tonight's meeting to order. Thank you to those attending in person and those staying engaged by watching our recording at a later time. The public is reminded that if they wish to speak during community comment, they will need to fill out a speaker form located in the lobby on the desk and turn it in to Board Secretary Kim Colvin, seated to my left. Comments will take place during a designated time on the agenda of community comments. Before we move to the, to the agenda, I want to take a moment to introduce those seated at the table with me. To my right, Superintendent Matt Degner, Directors Pilcher Hyatt, East Ham, Vice President Williams. To my left, Directors Abraham Clausen, Director Finch um, is currently out of town, and Board Secretary Kim Coven. And with that, we will move into tonight's agenda. First up is our education showcase, and we have the Wickham Student Leadership Group. Good evening, everybody. I am Amber Dobbs, and I am the proud principal at Wickham Elementary. We are thrilled to be here tonight to showcase our leadership groups. We take great pride in the fact that as a community, we are leaders and learners, teachers, students, adults in the community. And as part of that, we make sure that we provide leadership opportunities for students. So that's what they're gonna showcase for you tonight. They have a presentation, and then they also have a video that they would like for you to watch. So thank you for allowing <coughs> us to do this. Good evening, my name is Olivia and I'm a sixth grade student at Wickham Elementary. <coughs> I'm here tonight with my classmates, Ahmed, Tyler, Natalie, our school counselor, Miss Nelson, teachers, Mrs. Stiekelmeyer and Mrs. Hanrahan, and our principal, Mrs. Dobbs. We are here tonight to showcase the leadership groups at Wickham. We would like to start by sharing our Wickham daily affirmations. We are kind to others, we are creative, we are diverse, we are willing to make mistakes, we are leaders, we are learners, we are Wickham Wizards. Part of our daily affirmation states that we are leaders. Every student at Wickham is a leader. Because of that belief, we don't just have one leadership group like a student council. Instead, we are given the opportunity to sign up for various leadership groups that we are interested in being a part of. At the beginning of each school year, a Google form is shared with the fifth and sixth grade students that list various leadership positions. We then select up to three positions that we are interested in and get placed in at least one of our choices. Multiple teachers at Wickham lead the leadership groups. They, go, they give up their prep time or lunch through the year to guide us in our roles. Here are some of the leadership opportunities that were available this school year. Principal advisory team. This team meets with the principal and shares celebrations and concerns. Recycling team. This team works around the school to ensure that we are positively impacting the environment. School announcements and pledge team. This team helps with the school announcements and leading the pledge. School celebrations. This team plans and supports school-wide celebrations, including putting up bulletin boards. Dance marathon team. This team helps plan and run the mini dance marathon. Wickham ambassadors. This team works with outside organizations and supports them through fundraising. Office helpers. This team supports the main office in delivering things to classrooms as well as other general office help. Fall fun fair crew. This team supported the PTO with the fall fun fair and supervised games. Book shelving team. This team supports the library and shelves the books as well as other general library help. School buddies. This team supports students that may not always feel like they have a friend. Preschool buddies. This team supports preschool students in learning and growing. Safety patrol. This team supports the safety around Wickham. Now, isn't that an impressive list of leadership groups? <laughs> now, please enjoy your pre video presentations of students talking about what they have learned while being a part of these groups. My name is Christy Boykowska, and I am in sixth grade. I was part of the Dance Marathon leadership team, and as part of this team, I have learned how to motivate people to want to get involved. Hi, my name 
I think they have the sixth grade or part of the preschool leadership team. I have learned to demonstrate positive behavior for the preschoolers. I My name is Leo and I'm in fifth grade. I'm a part of the book shelters program. I've learned that it's important to give back to my community. My name is Ellie Vasco, I'm in the fifth grade. I am part of the peer-to-peer -peer leadership team. As a part of this team, I have learned that everyone is unique and it is important to be kind and help others. Hi, my name is Alfie and I'm in sixth grade. I'm part of the announcements leadership team. As a part of this team, I have learned that when you're doing something, it can be harder for somebody else than it is for you. So if they make a mistake, don't judge them. Hi, my name is Camden and I'm in sixth grade. I am part of the recycling leadership team. And as a part of this team, I have learned everybody has a part and it's important to help out the school. My name is Stella and I'm in sixth grade. I'm part of the celebration leadership team. As part of the team, I have learned it takes lots of preparation to get together a school-wide celebration. Hi, my name is Isabel Aronson. I'm in sixth grade and I'm part of the office helper leadership team. I have learned that giving back to the school community is beneficial. My name is Oscar. I was in the all fun for fifth grade team. And I learned that responsibility is the most useful skill in the world. Hi, my name is Chloe and I'm in sixth grade. I'm part of the Wickham Ambassadors. As part of this team, I have learned that if we work together, we can accomplish anything. Hi, I'm Georgia McNaughton and I'm in sixth grade. I'm part of the principal advisory group. As part of this team, I've learned that I'm a role model for others, especially when I do something as little as being kind. Hi, my name is Weston and I'm in fifth grade and I'm part of the Office Helper Leadership Team. And as a part of this team, I've learned that it's important to help out your school and community and that many hands make light work. Hi, my name is Abia and I'm in sixth grade. I'm part of the Safety Patrol Leadership Team. As part of this team, I have learned that how you act on a daily basis can inspire others to act in the same way, and one compliment can go a long way. That video was put together by our amazing secretary who's not here, but I have to give her credit because it's amazing. Um, student voice is very important in empowering and engaging students, and students often need support when learning how to use their voice, um, whether it comes to standing up to or for a friend, um, disagreeing appropriately, and these groups give us a chance to help students learn how to use their voice. It also helps with building community inside of Wickham because our preschool buddies and our celebration team sometimes get to work across grade levels that they don't get to experience. Um, and lastly, it kind of keeps us as adults um, keeping a pulse on the building, whereas I have what I think are amazing ideas for celebrations. I have often been told they are lame. And so <laughs> I have students who are able to tell me what students actually would enjoy so I don't put effort into something that is not going to be enjoyable for our school. So I thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to share tonight, and we'll head out. Thank you. Before you guys exit, sorry. Thank you so much for coming to share um, all of your leadership opportunities. And I do have to say, one took me back some 40, I don't know how long, but um, my high school had an announcement leadership club and it was very rewarding and it sort of helped prepare me for public speaking, but I still get nervous. But thank you so much for sharing. Let's give him another round of applause. And with that, we will move into community comment. Thank you for your interest in Iowa City Community School District and for your willingness to share your comments. You are reminded to give your name, address, and topic on which you would like to speak. During community comment, persons may speak to the board about topics relevant to the district. Speakers who make comments are reminded that they are responsible for their own statements and may be subject to legal action for those that are threatening, harassing, or defamatory in nature. 
It is expected that speakers will address the board and each other with civility and abide by the stated time limits. All community comment directed at non-agenda items and agenda items shall take place at the beginning of the meeting and shall be limited to four minutes per speaker. And that time will appear at the bottom of the screen to my left. The initial community comment period shall be limited to one hour. Remaining community comment to the extent necessary shall take place at the end of the meeting. The board will not engage in any discussion during public comment. The role of the board during this time is to listen. And with that, our first community commenter is Temple Hyatt. Good evening. My name is Temple Hyatt. Uh, you want my full address? I'm a resident of, of Iowa City, Iowa and I am the second of three generations to have gone through the Iowa City Community School District. Uh, I am here to comment on action item K-8, National Gun Violence Awareness Day. On May 24th of last year, I was attending the North Liberty National Gun Violence Aware Awareness Day proclamation. That was a devastating day, a day we lost 19 students and two teachers to gun violence at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. Unfortunately, the epidemic of gun violence continues. And through the first four months of 2023, there have been 185 mass shootings in the United States with more, more than 250 dead and more than 700 wounded. But as incidences of gun violence have grown, so too has the movement to stop it. We continue to educate, raise awareness, organize, advocate, and rally for safer communities. This year we invite everyone to wear orange on June 2nd, National Gun Violence Awareness Day. Wear orange originated on June 2nd, 2015, what would have been Padilla Pendleton's 18th <coughs> birthday. It began with teenagers <coughs> in Chicago who wanted to honor their friend Hadiyah after she was shot and killed. Today, Wear Orange honors Hadiyah and the more than 120 victims of gun violence every day in the United States, as well as the hundreds more who are wounded and the countless others who witness acts of gun violence. According to every town in an average year in Iowa, 323 people die by guns. 79% of those gun deaths are by firearm suicide. From 2012 to 2021, the rate of gun deaths in Iowa has increased 59% compared to 39% nationwide. These statistics, these are sobering statistics and we will continue to support projects focused on reducing gun violence, including firearm, excuse me, including suicide by firearm by improving the environments where gun violence takes place. So please join us on June 2nd to remember the victims of gun violence, especially those here in Iowa. We wear, wear orange to show that we value each person's life and to honor those killed, wounded, or impacted by gun violence and to call for an end to this crisis. Thank you for recognizing National Gun Violence Awareness Day. Thank you. Next up, we have Joseph Dobrian. Joseph Dobrian, 1015 Second Avenue. Tonight I speak both to the board and especially to the students of this district. America's schools have become indoctrination centers for a false and evil religion a religion that posits that our society is built on discrimination and oppression, a religion that teaches that words can mean the opposite of what they always have meant, a religion that despises and seeks to destroy all that is true, good, and beautiful, and instead worships the false, the evil, and the ugly. In service of this religion, our children are taught that America was not founded in 1776 to gain freedom, but in 1619 to preserve slavery. 
that men can give birth and that it's commendable when biological men compete in girls' and women's sports, that to respect the earth, we must drastically reduce human population. The Church of Woke is demonstrably <coughs> a religion. Does the Church of Woke have leadership and rules? Its leaders occupy positions of power in every institution and social medium. Its rules enforce preference and privileging of certain groups over others. Does the Church of Woke have rituals and celebrations? Entire months of its celebrations and commemorations occupy lesson plans in schools and all cultural platforms. Does the Church of Woke have sacred signs and symbols? Are you kidding? Does the Church of Woke have sacred writings or a mythos? Agitators like Howard Zinn, Ta-Nehisi Coates, and Nicole Hannah-Jones and others are its prophets and high priests. Their pronouncements form the holy scriptures. The Church of Woke employs a diabolical strategy whereby everything it does to supposedly eliminate hatred actually creates more hatred. That is not a bug, that is a feature. The Church of Woke is a religion of racism and misogyny. It is a cult of death. I call on America's youth to resist that evil religion with all the courage they can muster, and it will take courage. The Church of Woke might try to punish you if you resist, but that's an acceptable risk compared to betraying your own soul. If you're silent in the face of this evil, or if you dissemble, Whose life are you living? Who controls your tongue? The Church of Woke depends on everybody lying to each other about everything, all the time. You probably don't want to live that way. The first step of a courageous individual is to refuse to partake of a lie. Instead of genuflecting to lies and corruption, fight them with truth and virtue. That will grow you up and it will make you tougher. You have nothing better to do than to do what's right. Speak truth without fear and glory in having done so. The adventure of your life is embedded in truthful speech. Stand for truth. I promise truth will sustain you through any ordeal. I'll pray for all of you and please pray for me. Next up, we have Marcela. And if by chance I mispronounce your name, please feel free to correct me. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Marcela Hurtado. I want to um, introduce to you, you to the Latino community for education and we have the founders, Arlene, Maite, and Rosa. Our mission is to improve Hispanic representation in public education for our, for our children and their future. I have two children, one in West High and another in the Hills. Uh, I want to be open and about communication in three different ways. But I switch in Spanish, please. Vale. Um, the, la primera es registración. Para nuestra comunidad es tan difícil porque no sabemos navegar en el sistema escolar y la tecnología no es muy buena para nosotros. So the first um, path, the communication path that she wants to improve is the um, phone line. Sí, eso. Uh, you, you, what you, hablas un poco demasiado rápido, entonces okay. quiero, quiero que re, 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 okay. un poco. The, the phone line because you're not good. The technology is difficult. Sí. ¿Sí? Para la registración es for registration, that's what it is. So for the registration process, we need to have it be a little bit um, more accessible. Sí. La, la segunda sí es la línea de teléfono. Eso es. This one is the telephone line. So the first one is registration. Porque cuando hacemos nosotros las llamadas es tantos números sí. y en inglés. Mm -hmm. So when they make a phone call to the school buildings, there's a whole list of things that is said in English. 
Y es demasiada información. Con trabajo estamos entendiendo eh, 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 uh -huh. a dónde vamos. Sí. There's too much information and they have to pick out which one they're supposed to go to next. Eh, la verdad me gustaría si de alguna manera se puede hacer algo más fácil, más accesible esta línea de teléfono. So they would like to have a, a line, a system of some kind where it's more accessible so that they don't have to figure out what all these English words are at the beginning and instead it's easier to just go directly to a, a Spanish speaker. La tercera serían las conferencias. The, the third for communication improvement is conferences. ¿Cómo podríamos trabajar para que sea solo un enlace para todas las clases? Eso. There's got to be, they're hoping we can work on a way that there's one link that they're given for all of the conferences. Porque la verdad, nos estamos perdiendo las conferencias, no tanto porque no queramos. Right, because the truth is, because it, the, the um, links are confusing, they end up missing conferences. It's not because they want to miss them. It's because the links get screwed up. En lo personal, apenas encuentro una con trabajos cuando ya se me acabaron mis cinco minutos y ya, ya perdí la otra. Yeah, so the thing is, is there only so much time so you can get into it, right? As we all know, there are, there's many minutes for your conferences. By the time she gets to it, it's out of time. Este, me gustaría que se quedaran con esto para ver cómo podemos trabajar para ser más accesible para la comunidad. Claro, entonces, sorry, and so what she's saying is they need to find a way. We're hoping we can find a way that it's more accessible. Eh, accessible. Mm -hmm. Les hemos dejado un sticker y también una copia de nuestra misión. So they um, gave all of you a sticker and also um, a, a mission statement and you received that mission statement from me in, in an email. También queremos invitarlos a nuestras reuniones, es cada primer lunes del mes. Sí, yeah. also, um, they want to invite you to their meetings, they are the first Monday of the month. A las seis de la tarde. At six o'clock. No tenemos un espacio por el momento estable. Sí, we don't have a, a formal place where we're meeting, but. Nos lo estamos reuniendo en los parqueos y también en Open Heartland. We meet in the um, mobile home parks and in Open Heartland. La verdad nos gustaría, somos solo cuatro, ustedes ven cuatro personas, pero detrás de nosotros hay otros pa padres y nos gustaría que los conocieran. Yeah, she said we're only four people, but they're representing an entire community and they would all love to meet everybody here. Thank you. Y una nota, síganos en Facebook. Tenemos and you can follow página. them on Facebook. Thank you. Next up, we have Arlene. Six Good evening. My name is Arlene Spencer and I am a member of Latinos para la Educación. I have um, two daughters in this district, one in Longfellow and one in Southeast. At the beginning of the school year, the bus stop at Lake Ridge Mobile Home Park was moved to the mailbox, and the space was too small and dangerous for the kids. We asked to have a meeting with Superintendent Degner at the meeting, we showed pictures and videos of the situation. He listened, and as a result of our meeting, the district agreed to change the bus stop back where it was. As a member of this group, I would like to keep helping our community. Thank you. Next up, we have Rosa. Hola, buenas tardes. Could you, uh, un poco más cerca, sí, mejor. Hola, buenas tardes. Hello, good evening. Uh, mi nombre es Rosa. My name is Rosa. Y tengo dos hijos actualmente en el distrito. I have two kids in the district. Uh, represento Latinos para la Educación. And I represent Latinos para la Educación. Y estoy aquí al igual que ustedes porque me interesa el futuro de los niños. Uh, I'm here, no podía oír. Estoy aquí al igual que ustedes porque me interesa el futuro de los yes, niños. Yes, I'm here because um, I'm interested in the future of my children. Uh, creemos que una manera de apoyar. We want to find a way to support. Es unirnos y hacer actividades culturales. We want to have um, 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 activities, cultural activities. Uh, y que las escuelas se involucren. And that the schools work together y nuestros niños se desenvuelvan más positivamente. Um, and that the children um, are included in a more positive way. Uh, y así express, se expresen de manera social. Um, that they express themselves in a social manner. 
uh, física y lingüística. Ah, that they are able to better express themselves um, socially, um, linguistically, and physically. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Maite. Maite. Mm -hmm. Maite. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hola, buenas tardes. Hello, good evening. Mi nombre es Maite Flores. My name is Maite Flores. Vengo en representación de Latinos para la Educación. I come as a representative of Latinos para la Educación. Tengo tres hijos. Mm, I have three children. Una graduada de City High. Mm -hmm. One graduated from City. Un chico de 14 años que va a ser freshman in City a, High. A 14-year-old who's a freshman, will be a freshman at City. Y una niña de cuatro años próxima a cursar preescolar en Mark yeah. Twain. And a, a four-year-old who will be in preschool at Mark Twain. Uno de nuestros objetivos es el de crear un plan de apoyo. Uh, one of our objectives is to create a plan of support que involucre a la ciudad y al distrito escolar. That um, includes the city and the school district. En la violencia y el bullying. In, the, in, in violence and bullying, to address violence and bullying. Dado que esto ya no es solo dentro de los edificios escolares. Because this isn't just happening in our school buildings. Sino en lugares públicos también. Also in public places. Y como experiencia personal. And through my own personal experience. Los padres nos sentimos sin respuestas o soluciones claras y concisas. The parents feel like they don't have answers or um, clear and clear and concise ways of addressing it. Nos sentimos perdidos en el proceso. We feel lost in the process. Nunca recibimos una respuesta clara ni de la escuela ni de la ciudad. Sometimes we don't get a clear answer from the school or the city. Porque son menores de edad y al mismo tiempo son ciudadanos. Entonces nadie quiere tomar la responsabilidad al 100%. Porque, because they are um, young people, ¿Y por qué son ciudadanos? ¿Qué dijiste? Son ciudadanos de la comunidad. Sí, ok, so they're young people yeah. and they're members of, of our community, so we need to have a way to respond. Otro de nuestros objetivos. Another one of our goals. Es el de orientar a las nuevas familias en el sistema educativo. It's to orient our new families into our education system. Estas son familias que son completamente nuevas en nuestra comunidad. These are families that are completely new to our community. No tiene ninguna experiencia. They don't have any experience. Queremos brindarles apoyo a través de nuestro programa de embajadores. We want to um, offer them support through this program, program we're creating of ambassadors. Para que sean guiados paso a paso. So that they can be guided step by step. En toda la rutina escolar. In all of the school routines. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Roy Sam Porter. Good evening. My name is Roy Sam Porter, 136 Apple News Court, Iowa City. Most of you know me. I'm Roy Sam Porter, member of the Johnson County Board of Supervisors and a community organizer. I'm here tonight in my role as president of the Black Voices Project, which is a group of community members of all races who are committed to supporting a thriving black culture in Iowa City and Johnson County. BVP would like to invite you all to join in the celebration of Juneteenth on the weekend of June 15th through the 17th. As you know, Juneteenth honors the end to slavery in the United States and is considered the longest running African American holiday. Some of the local activities planned include Friday night concert, June 16th on the Pad Mall with Isaac um, James Music, we have free food, a fashion show by Andre Wright, House of Fashion, and uh, a band coming from uh, Chicago called Aniva. Saturday is a joint celebration with Iowa City Pride and Coralville Juneteenth. Sunday is a community celebration in collaboration with Fred Newell of the Purpose Place Church with an outdoor service at Weatherby Park at 10.30 a.m., followed by a family picnic and family-friendly activities. Please join us for any or all of the local celebrations. In addition, Black Voices Project wants you to know that we support your proposal to put a local option sales tax before voters this fall with the intent to direct a portion of the revenue to the Iowa City Community School District to fund a rep care for the state-funded four-year-old preschool program. 
We know that many local families cannot access preschool for their children, either because the cost is too high or because the lower cost programs do not conform with the work hours of most parents. We applaud your efforts to make preschool universally accessible and pledge to work with you to generate support amongst voters if the local muni municipalities agree to put this on the ballot. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Elisa Meggett. Alisa Maggot. Hi. Okay. I'm here. I just had a chance to look over the board agenda, and in that, I see that tonight you guys are going to review the negotiated agreement for the 23 24 year. And I noticed that they're going to pull out the level two grievances, or I see that that's recommended. And I want to express my opposition to that. I think it's a really important role that you play in our school board. And one of your, your roles, you know, outlined in, what is it? The board policy, 200.3, is that we have the administrative oversight and that we make sure that we are operating in alignment with our district policy and with our district goals, our district guiding philosophies. And, and that's a really important role. And these grievances, these level two grievances, respond to complaints that fall outside of the negotiated agreement. And um, I think it's a really important piece of our contract because it allows you to have access to violations that might have occurred. And I don't know how otherwise you might know what has happened, right? Um, I have submitted, I think, seven in the last year. And I, it's really important that you're able to review um, violations. The, the total combined is something close to four to 500 violations. And I want to keep that in the negotiated agreement to make sure that we have your opportunity to serve as a guardrail and make sure that we're operating within the constraints of district policy, state policy, federal laws, and, um, and all the guidelines that, that we operate within. And so I am inviting you to reconsider that piece of the negotiated agreement. I appreciate the work you do with the negotiated agreement and have benefited as an Iowa City teacher for 21 years, I think it's a fantastic, um, a fantastic contract. Um, but that's a piece that I want to see remain in it so that we can continue to hold everybody accountable to our policies and laws. I don't see any compelling reason to eradicate that from our negotiated agreement. Thank you. Next up, we have Janice Weiner. Good evening, everyone. Janice Weiner, 2525 Mayfield Road here in Iowa City. I really just wanted to come to uh, talk a little bit in detail about what Roy Sand was referring to. Uh, we benefited this past year from your pre-K program, which was outstanding. We also benefited from your pilot program with wraparound care. And I can tell you that I, I mean, I really think that every kid, it would be wonderful if every kid in this district could benefit from that. I saw the difference between when my granddaughter walked into pre-K in the fall, started the wraparound care, um, and when I happened to take her in late to class last week because she'd had a dental appointment, and I watched her interact with the teacher and the teacher interacting with, with her and the rest of the class and said, she is ready for kindergarten, and every single kid in this district deserves that. So I'm also a supporter of LOST, local option sales tax, but I wanted to give you all a shout out both for the pre-K program and for trying out the wraparound care, which I hope will be able to expand and include more kids. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our community comment. Next on the agenda, I would entertain a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. <coughs> Second. Kim, we're ready to vote. I'm sorry, Board Secretary Colvin, we're ready to vote. Online voting is open. Probably gonna say that again. Director Abraham, yours hasn't come oh, through. Okay. I didn't hear that. You don't have anything? How would you like to vote? Yes. Thank you. All votes have been cast and the motion carries with all directors voting in favor. Thank you. 
Next up is the consent agenda, but before we dive into it, just wanna double check with any directors to see if there were any questions or public comments from those who reviewed the bills. Hearing none, I would entertain a motion for approval. Oh, so sorry. First, are there any items that directors would like to pull from tonight's consent agenda? Okay, I see I was reading your minds. <laughs> I would entertain a motion for approval of tonight's consent agenda. I move approval of the consent agenda for this, the, tonight's meeting. Second. Board Secretary Coven, we're ready to vote. Online voting is open. All votes have been cast and the motion carries with all directors voting in favor. Great. That takes us to our one and only public hearing. Vice President Williams. I'm pulling it off. I, I said I was going to be on top of it today and I wasn't. All right. Now is the time and place for the public hearing on the district's proposed fiscal year 2023 certified budget amendment. Notice of the public hearing was published in the Iowa City Press Citizen on May 5th, 2023. Are there any comments from the board? Is there anyone from the community that would like to advise or provide comments to the board on the proposed fiscal year 2023 budget amendment? Seeing none, I will close that public hearing. Next up is our policy review and chairperson, Director Finch, uh, wasn't at the meeting tonight, she was unavailable, and Vice President Williams chaired the meeting. So I would turn it over to her to see if she has any additional comments on 900 series or policy primers. I think we had a robust conversation around the table about some of the 900 series. Uh, everyone at the table tonight was at the table back there earlier, so I don't wanna uh, um, get uh, too much in the details, but if anybody else wants to add comments, um, please feel free to do so. Hearing none, we will move on to tonight's discussion item. And the first one is the equity update surrounding Historic Preservation Month. And yes, we're going to, uh, Deputy Superintendent Ramey is going to uh, take this one for us tonight. And we have Principal uh, Cannon in the back as well. And so we're excited to highlight uh, Keith Herring mural that is at Horn Elementary um, through the equity update this evening and talk to you about some of the plans uh, with the renovation coming at Horn and, and our partnership here with the University of Iowa. So with that, I'll let Chase take it away. Great. Thanks, Superintendent Degner, and good evening, board members. I am really excited to be talking about this this evening. It's such a cool partnership and a cool thing for our district and something that's been buried in our history for a long time and I'm glad we have the opportunity to come and speak with you and hopefully this won't be the only conversation we have as we track the progress and I really appreciate uh, Kristen and all of her work at Horn and making sure that we were on top of this and bringing this to you and as, uh, as the title says we want to talk about some Keith Herring artwork that we currently have at Horn Elementary and a couple of things first talk about his background how he was in Iowa City then show you a couple of his famous works and really talk about this partnership that that we have um, and one of the reasons I want to talk about his background, because I have to admit, until about six months ago, I, I didn't really know a lot about uh, Keith. He and I are buddies now that I've uh, been researching him. But uh, and some of the amazing things that, that he's done. And uh, he was an international artist. Uh, really, his rise was during the 80s. And unfortunately, his career was, was pretty short. It's about 50 um, large productions during that time frame, but he, he passed of AIDS in, in 1990. So we had a meteoric, meteoric rise, but unfortunately was not with us very long. And during that time, um, he, was, he was an openly gay man and he was a fierce advocate for gay rights and, and H, HIV awareness. But also a lot of his work um, revolved around children and giving back to the community and such an advocate for social justice in, in a lot of different ways. And so did a lot in his brief time through his art. Um, the most of his time was spent in New York, but in 1984, he came to the University of Iowa and Iowa City and, and worked with the art museum and with the university for a brief period. And during that time, he had a public exhibit. That's the display, I think, that he drew and we had here in I Iowa City in 1984. And one of our teachers, Colleen Ernst, otherwise known as Dr. Art, I see um, Director Abraham shaking your head, maybe they cross paths. I know Eliza uh, worked with her. Is that right, Eliza, your first year at 
at Horn, um, a teacher by all accounts ador adored by her students, took her class to see one of Herring's uh, exhibits. And um, it was the only time that he was here in Iowa City was during that brief period, 1984, for an extended period. But he found Iowa City just a place that resonated with him. And I think uh, Dr. Art had something to do with that. And here's one of his quotes about what he really felt that um, Art could do. And before we get into really the specifics of, of the partnership we have, we want to share a couple of his more famous pieces. And first, of course, the one we have hanging right here in our own school district at Horn Elementary. And so you see there the Horn mural that he did. He did it specifically for um, our elementary school at the request of Dr. Art. And we'll come back to that a little bit. But something you might actually know him for, or maybe you didn't know it was him, was that Keith designed the logo for Best Buddies International. And so it's probably one of his most famous pieces of art although not really something that hangs in a gallery, but represents what Best Buddies International does uh, for people all over the world. And at the bottom, you can see um, you know, what, he, what he told them in terms of using this logo. And if you go to the Best Buddies webpage, uh, they actually have a copy of the handwritten note that he wrote, well, with a, a Swatch watch. I mean, if that's not 1980s, what is, right? <laughs> uh, a Swatch watch band that, that he designed for them <laughs> as well. And so truly, uh, a philanthropic uh, gentleman in, in the work that he did. He also did things internationally, um, the Berlin Wall and talking about unity. This was uh, right outside of Checkpoint Charlie along that stretch. And then a mural um, on the exterior stairwell of the Children's Museum in Paris. And so he did some really, really big projects in his life too. And interestingly enough, I was listening to sports talk radio this week. Well. It's not interesting that I was listening to sports talk radio, but in listening to sports talk radio, they were talking about um, Victor Webinyaman. I'm not, I'm not saying his last name right, but he is the presumed number one draft pick in the upcoming NBA draft. And he is from France and plays in the French League. And they were talking about him. They said, well, you know, he's really into art, 19-year-old kid, really into culture, really into art. And they said, well, you ask him who his favorite artist was. He said, well, the American Keith Haring. And again, like six weeks ago, that would have gone way over my head. But because of this and, and being more in tune with it, there's the number one basketball player, presumably, in the draft, likes Keith Haring, which it's just you, you start to learn and you make these connections. And, and probably because he does work in places like Paris that speak to that. That's just a little bit of a flavor of some of his work. But getting back to our partnership here, I mentioned that he was here in 1984. He developed a friendship um, with Dr. Art. That's a picture of Dr. Art and her family. Her son in the pink shirt there actually posted this picture online. And that quote underneath was from an anonymous person that obviously was at the school too. And so Keith just didn't do this mural for the school, but clearly did some prints and some pictures for some of the, the students that were at Horn Elementary. And so really, she was responsible for developing this relationship to, to make this project. At the time, she thought it was just cool for the kids of, of Horn that has become a, a living legacy. And so the mural was completed in 1989. Uh, he let students work on it. And the cost of now this uh, piece of art we can't put a price tag on, one plane ticket that the uh, Horn PTA um, generously donated um, uh, to uh, the school so they could fly him out here to, to complete the project. And it remains in the Horn Library since its completion then. Now, this is a cool thing, right? And I said something that's been buried in our history for a long time, but the real reason we're talking about it this evening is because Jeff and his team are about to tear Horn Elementary apart as part of FMP 2.0 and, and do a renovation, which Jeff shared with us today. Um, not only does that mural hang in the library, it actually hangs in our last existing reading, reading I was gonna call it a pit, our reading well um, from those designs in the 70s and 80s. And we're gonna take that out, really modernize the library, and so this piece of art has to come down. And when the uh, Stanley um, Museum learned about this, they reached out and they wanted to help us uh, preserve what I said, this legacy piece of art that we are so lucky to have here in our community. And so um, they're gonna come remove it and then they're gonna keep it on loan while Horn undergoes um, construction. And one of the cool things that we've learned is they're actually planning an exhibit 
with this piece as the centerpiece of the exhibit with a lot of his other work um, uh, around it. Uh, there's lots of doodles and other drawings and notes that uh, Kristen still had at Horn that we've provided to the museum for safekeeping as we do the renovation. And um, really, as I've tried to champion, uh, Keith established an ongoing friendship with Horn, not just something that was here and then gone and to be forgotten. And as I mentioned, he did more than just one work. Uh, the picture right there is the first one that he did. It actually still hangs in Kristen's oh. office today. And I think Kristen brought a copy of the cookbook. Um, there's a Horn cookbook that we, um, that we also have uh, that has that cover on it. And so a true lasting friendship that he was able to provide for us. And we so appreciate um, the, the University of Iowa Stanley Museum's partnership in preserving this work. And um, I don't think I mentioned it, but it's on the first slide that before Keith's death, he established the Herring um, Foundation. They're also partnering with us on this. And so we think that this is going to at some point be a national story about the work that he's done. And so we're just very privileged and, and very appreciative of Dr. Art, of course, of, of Keith, and, and just having this as part of who we are as a school district. And so next steps, and then we'll open up to some uh, discussion for you all. The university will remove the mural during summer of 2023. Now, these pictures don't do it credit. If you've not been to Horn recently, this, this mural is, we said about six feet tall. About the size of the so, so six feet tall, about 12 feet wide. Um, Keith painted it actually on three different pieces of plywood, and so then they put them together, and they drilled it into the, um, the cinder block wall with bolts and then painted over it. So removing this is not going to be the easiest um, task. Jeff and myself and maybe Kristen to help document, we're going to be on hand because it's going to be awesome to watch. But what they're telling us is they're actually going to take other plywood and put it on the back of the cinder block wall to help stabilize it. Then they're just going to cut the entire wall out and take the, take the mural to the Stanley Museum when then they will um, hopefully detach the mural from the wall. And Jeff estimates it'll weigh about 1,200 pounds or something like that when they, when they take it off the wall. But they are as excited as we are about it um, to help us preserve this, this great piece of history and a true uh, piece of culture that we have here in our district. And um, of course, uh, once our renovation is completed, we're gonna work with uh, Stanley to bring it back to Horn and place it in a secure place. And um, it's been an elementary school with thousands of elementary kids between the ages of five up to 11 or 12 years old and it's still in really good shape. Uh, they, they've somehow known the value of this and it's just a tremendous piece to have um, in our district and we couldn't be prouder. And so I know that was quick, but uh, we just appreciate the time to share this story with you all and hopefully to, to update you as we move on. But with that, I'd open it to any questions or comments the board would have. Directors? I would just say, I was at Horn a bunch back when my kid did the girls choir and I stared at that thing. It's so, it's so neat to look at and I had no idea what I was looking at. I mean, I, I knew I liked it, but here it was a big deal the whole time. Yeah. Way to go. Way to keep this thing um, preserved and to, uh, to be part of the Stanley Art Museum collaboration. This is really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, when are they going to start taking it out? We're still working on that. Um, we gave them a deadline of later in the summer before the construction has to start, but we're trying to get that um, kind of just finalize there's some logistical things we want to make sure that we have taken care of behind the scenes um, before we do it but um, they've been over to see the space and I mean they are very excited to have this uh, coming but it'll be this summer exciting yeah thanks to Stanley too for helping us absolutely out and participating yeah this is a really uh, inspiring project on the part of everyone who's in involved in it uh, I really appreciate the work that the principals have done and uh, the staff at, at Horn. Uh, uh, I wonder if it's if it's possible at some point to uh, incorporate in uh, maybe in bringing the piece back to Horn or at some point anyway, and to incorporate some kind of reaction on the part of the, those thousands of uh, five to twelve year old kids that have been at the school when the murals in place. Sure. Um, uh, I don't know if, if that's I don't know if that's doable or not. But to me, you know, we had kids here tonight. It'd be great to have kids, you know, 
talking about this too, if that's possible. Sure. Yeah, I'm excited um, to go see it in person before it's removed, but also once it's um, on display at the Stanley Museum, and hopefully we can get some of our um, art classes in there to admire it once it's on display. So thank you for sharing that. And the, the other person I'd like to make sure we thank and to, to build on Director Eastham's comments is, um, I mentioned her name a couple of times, but the more I've learned is that Dr. Art was truly very, very influential in this. And um, they basically became, as Jeff told me, pen pals, right, in the 80s. And um, they just had this relationship. And she, but except for her relationship with Keith, he wouldn't have come back and done this work. And so we hope to bring Dr. Art back at some point to share some of her stories because she's truly the one that, uh, that made this happen. And um, we definitely want her to be part of that celebration as well. That would be great. I was just gonna dare to suggest a possible education committee topic would maybe be at the Stanley to see this oh. once it next year once it gets in place. I know we usually go to schools, but that might be a, a fun well, idea. idea for us to all get there together and, and see it in the display. That's that would idea. be fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Of course. And um, next up we have um, our Second discussion item, the safety district fencing plan. Superintendent Degner, did you want to say anything before you turned it over to Deputy Superintendent Ramey? This one will not be as exciting, but <laughs> very important. Uh, so, um, yeah, it, Chase is going to take the lead here for us. Uh, we also have Jeff and Ben uh, in the room here this evening, and so we're just looking for a little bit of direction from you guys, but I uh, wanted to point out kind of current status and then make sure um, we follow through on kind of your wishes and some of our plans here moving forward. So with that, go ahead, Chase. Right, uh, as Matt said, maybe not as exciting and from taking things out to hopefully putting things into our schools, we do wanna talk a little bit about our fencing and um, this grew out of our conversation at the board ops uh, committee meeting in April and really just kind of three uh, overview, overview points that we should be able to move through rather quickly. Um, where we see it as a, a district safety initiative, the specific projects, and then next steps in discussion. And so, as I mentioned, um, it came out of our discussions on April 11th. The uh, policy, or excuse me, the presentation is linked in there um, if you all would, would like to see it. And really, if you remember, we were having a discussion about making sure that our buildings had similar um, safety measures in place and that one building wasn't lagging behind another as we made improvements. And we got around to the conversation about, well, actually, one of the biggest discrepancies we have is that certain elementary buildings do not currently have fences. And we do see that as a safety risk for our students, um, both with keeping people out, but also keeping our students from being on the playground and maybe you know going down the street. And, and so we wanna make sure we're keeping them safe um, throughout the school environment. And you see there listed the, the projects that we're focused on right now, Coralville Central, Longfellow, Shimmick, Van Allen, and, and Weber. And as we look at the individual projects, um, some of them are um, larger than others. Uh, the proposed fence for the schools would be in red. That doesn't mean that there isn't other fence there. It just means that we have some existing fence at Coralville Central, but we would need that fence that, that's uh, put there in the red to block off that um, far back um, part of our Coralville Central campus and to connect the fence all the way around. When we look at Longfellow, it's a much bigger area um, and, and one that we have not traditionally fenced in uh, from the neighborhood around it. So we have our primary playgrounds off to the right, but as you look back, that's all an open um, space, open to, uh, again, the neighborhoods around it. And so a fence around that entire piece of the property. Similar with, with Shimmick. Um, as we've made our changes to Shimmick, uh, we have some fencing, but again, it's more of a um, complete uh, project around the property there at, at Shimmick Elementary. Van Allen, uh, some fencing, but again, on that north end and that east side of the building, we would wanna complete the fencing project so that it, it went around. And uh, it's hard to make out a little bit, but one of the things that we've heard, and we can talk more about this in the discussion, is if you look at that north fence, it's really right along the property line of our neighbors that back up to that. And you can even see some of the fences they have in place. And it's us 
putting our fence along that to really signal um, that division between the two properties. And then lastly, uh, Weber Elementary. Um, again, some fencing in place. And you can also see that the uh, topography of our school sites varies. And so it really impacts how we have to put the fences in, in, in place. And um, we have, we've had preliminary plans in, in place for fences on these projects uh, for a long time in, in some places. And that's why we're able to generate the drawings so quickly. We're not taking them out to bid, of course, but it's been a part of our plan for a long time. And that leads us to next steps in discussion. And we know that community engagement and uh, notification is a critical piece. And so we would want to do that before we would take on any of these projects. But really the main question for tonight and what we'd like to discuss with the board is, are we at the point where this is more of uh, going to the community and saying, hey, we're going to go forward with these projects. We'd like your feedback, but no, this is part of our safety plan and we're gonna move forward. Or are we going to go to them and say, we'd like to do this, but we're not gonna move forward without your approval. And why we frame these questions this way is because historically, neighborhoods at these schools have been very resistant to us putting up fences um, that go around the property. And that is a roadblock we have run into more than one time and have really stalled out the, these projects. And, and that's why I'd like to have that discussion with you about how we approach the community engagement because that's where we've gotten hung up in the past. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, we see the lack of fences as a safety risk for the schools. Um, the good news is, is the projects and the cost can be uh, incorporated into FMP 2.0. We've run those numbers already. And because of some of the pre-work, even though we haven't bid it, we believe that we can get completion dates for all five projects by the end of fall of this mm -hmm. year. So this isn't something we're looking to do over the next three to five years. This is something we're actually looking to do over the next six to seven months. Um, and it, it shouldn't come as a surprise, but the administration strongly um, supports moving forward with these five fence projects. A brief overview, uh, happy to call my expert, Jeff, to answer any of the technical questions you have and answer any other questions or entertain uh, any information you want to provide to us. So quick question, are these the only schools that don't have these fences or yes. is, okay. Yep. So all our other schools are- so Only elementary. Elementary, right. I'm sorry, elementary yeah. schools, and these are the only ones that don't have that type of fencing. That's correct. And in looking at the drawing for Weber, are you saying currently these houses can just sort of, anybody can walk where our key, that's, that's the current situation? Yes. Okay. Um, before I sort of share where I'm headed, I wanna make sure that I don't influence any of my other fellow directors and would open it up for you all to share um, feedback on those two questions that um, Deputy Superintendent Ramey posted. Post. I guess I think it's enough of a, a safety issue that we need to proceed. We need to be open about what we're doing and try to talk to people and if there's anything we can do that you know, would make them feel better about, you know, about putting the fences there. But I, I think we have, we, we need fences. That's, that's a big, sort of an obvious safety thing. So I think we need to go ahead. I feel the same way, or I have, or am of the same opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, and particularly your bulleted point, lack of fences presents a safety risk for these schools. You know, and I'm sure that you, that that's a clear uh, thing in uh, in the opinion of the administration, and I think that's something we should definitely uh, uh, emphasize as we discuss this with the people of the community. I mean, and it is, and, and that's a valid point. And we can, if the principals are here, I think they would all tell you that they believe that lack of fences um, are, are concerns. I can think of incidents at a number of those buildings even this year where students have gone further off the property than we would have liked. That um, a fence may not have prohibited that, but it would have slowed their egress from the property down to the point where we would have had better eyes on them. And so, um, uh, yes, Director Easton, I, the, the principals, I've heard from several of them today about their support for this and their, their gratitude for the board for taking this on and helping us move forward with these fences at these schools. And we are talking about putting fences only on property owned by the district. That is correct. And I did not point out um, 
in the drawings, you'll see a lot of places where Jeff and his team have put in double gates because we are very conscious and sensitive to the idea that our playgrounds and our school sites are community property. And so we're not fencing uh, the, the sites to uh, make them inaccessible to everyone in our community, but to keep our students safe during the school day. So the gates allow for access on the weekends, on the evenings to the playgrounds at the various sites, because we do see our schools as important uh, gathering places for our neighborhoods. And we wanna make sure they remain accessible to those in our community. That was going to be my question, if they'll be accessible. And I assume there are these fences around, chain link fence, six foot tall, yeah. Yep. And yeah, and accessible on the weekend. So yeah, I would agree. This is just something we need to, you know, again, we're bringing all our schools into, um, uh, you know, they're all very similar, uh, locked entrances, you know, all the, or observable entrances. So this is just, I think, another safety piece. Um, so I don't, you know, I do want to be transparent with folks and tell them I don't want to seek approval. I mean, I do think that's what we're here for and that's what we're elected for is to, um, is to, you know, kind of give the blessing on this sort of thing and, and take the heat as I'm sure there will be heat. Oh, yeah. I agree with the rest of the directors and I was going to be very direct and say, to answer the question, I do not see it as asking for approval. I see it as information providing purposes. And I will just close out that I agree. And you mentioned that, you know, um, we've had incidents at some of these schools where kids may have um, gotten a little bit further than what we want. But I also see um, this fencing as perhaps slowing down anybody coming to our buildings to not maybe do the right thing. And hopefully we'll give folks enough notice to see somebody scaling a six foot fence. Um, so yeah, it's district property. It's part of our safety plan. Um, we should hold community engagements to inform them and m maybe hear thoughts, but we need to move forward with this. Thank you. And we will be, you know, we, we try to be good neighbors. And so when we do this, we'll do it in the right way, inviting them to send information out and, and try to incorporate as much feedback as we can, but also be transparent with this is something we're going to do for these reasons. We'll accommodate requests as we can, but moving forward, the idea that we are going to put the fences into these sites. <coughs> Great. And they're saying about fences and neighbors and- There is. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you Thank so you. much. Next up, we have our presentation for tonight, the quarterly financial report for the period ending March 31st, 2023. Uh, yes, directors, you have the report uh, in the board packet. You probably have went uh, directly to the, the 10th page where the unspent balance is. Uh, that should look pretty familiar after the process that we've been engaging with over the last uh, five or six months, we're still on track to uh, improve our general fund balance and unspent balance as we've been, uh, been the goal both for this year and projecting into next year. Um, so I guess the, and this does include the budget adjustment process uh, in there with the $8 million for this year and the amount for next year. And we've also included in this first quarterly report, it's been in the previous reports that we've been doing as part of the budget adjustments, but the million dollars projected for uh, middle school transition. So it, we have added that in here as a part of those discussions. So just kind of wrap that all together for you. So with that, I'll entertain any questions you might have. Are there any questions from directors? I, no questions, but I always comment on this because, you know, when you're in those years uh, where on that page 10 where you have the unspent balance, and I always appreciate the coloring, you know, when you're in those years of red and yellow and orange and you get nervous, but what's always given me um, trust is that we see how it gets green. And, and, and it's not like we know what's going to come up. We didn't know what the budget cuts were going to be this year. But certainly I have trust in our folks to give us good advice, to guide us, to get us to where, you know, when that's in the green, those numbers, those percentages, we have not seen that since I've been on the board. And I think before it where we're well over five and we're into our board policy which is between five and ten percent and I always felt fine being in the red because I felt and believed we would get to those green numbers and it's just good to see there it is with all the budget cuts we've had to do with all the money we still need to spend that we're going to get up um, you know up 
between five and 10% and, and meet our board policy. So we, we don't have to be there every year, but I do think it's important that we're, we know we can get there. You know, that's one of our primary jobs is that we're good stewards of taxpayer money, and this just gives me confidence that we are. So thank you. Thank you so much. And that takes us to our action items for tonight. And the first up, I would entertain a motion to approve the 2023, I'm sorry, 2022-23 amended certified budget. Uh, I move that we approve the 2022-2023 amended certified budget. Second. Is there any discussions, questions? Hearing none, Board Secretary Coven, we're ready to vote. Online voting is open. All votes have been cast and the motion carries with all directors voting in favor. Next up, I would entertain a motion for the resolutions directing the sale of series 2023 save revenue and refunding bonds. President Malone, before you get into approving the resolutions, if I could share just a little bit of information Absolutely. today. Uh, we work to finalize the sale earlier today, um, so it's pretty exciting. Um, our financial advisors had projected that an interest rate of about 4.1% is where the bonds would come in. We actually came in at 3.71%, um, which was very comparable to a similar sale in the Des Moines area for uh, a municipality over there at 377 today. So they will be bought by uh, J.P. Morgan. Um, it's one of the largest purchasers of uh, saved revenue bonds in the state of Iowa and one of the primary agents that they work with. There were three other entities that expressed interest in our bonds, did not present formal bids, but their preliminary numbers came in at 4.25% or higher. So they kind of passed on further discussions with them and went uh, directly to, to J.P. Morgan uh, for doing this. Now, you're, we're used to lower interest rates on the bonds that we've sold previously. And one of the things that's kind of impacting the market and why there was one really only aggressive mark or bidder uh, for these bonds is um, we're in a rising interest rate environment, as we all know, and it's the debt ceiling discussions is taking up a lot of time in the, in the media, right? And so uh, buyers are hesitant to go out to 15-year bonds. They want to stay in a shorter window because they recognize the volatility. And so to get an interest rate that's this uh, positive in this environment is a very strong indication of what they think of Iowa in general because they are sales tax bonds as well as the school district. So that's a very positive thing. The other thing that you're seeing in the marketplace is uh, the bank pressures that we're hearing about, bank closures and that type of thing. Some of these people are skittish to be getting involved in these kind of transactions. And so uh, we continue to do that. And well, it's considered a big offering, a size offering. Uh, a couple of those other uh, entities that I indicated uh, could only bid up for, uh, for a piece of it for about $40 million a piece, so it would have taken multiple bidders to accomplish what we wanted to do. So um, very, very positive uh, result today. Um, this sets us up very well to uh, move forward with uh, FMP 2.0. Uh, finishing up those middle schools is what will do this. It moves us into the next uh, phase of some of those uh, smaller projects. And I call them smaller, not that they're less important, but dollar-wise in terms of, uh, you know, the million to $3 million projects and some of those, as well as some of the projects that we need to do at some of our athletic facilities, like replace, replacing the turf and some of those things that have to be done. And, and you took action on some of those resolutions earlier uh, this spring. So I thank you for that. So this kind of culminates that process. We will have one more set of documents to approve uh, in June um, that finalize all the sale and accept all of the things. and and th those final steps for a sale. But this, uh, this is that next phase, and so um, I do appreciate you taking action on the two resolutions that you have before you tonight. Great. That's exciting Thank news you. on that percentage rate. Yes, very exciting. Thank you so much. I will reiterate that I would entertain a motion. I will move that we pass the resolutions directing the sale of approximately 76,500,000 of saved revenue bonds to fund FMP 2.0 projects and refund the series 2015 save bonds and authorizing the redemption of the outstanding series 2015 save bonds. Second. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, Board Secretary Coven, we're ready to vote. Online voting is open. All votes have been cast and the motion carries with all directors voting in favor. Next up, we have several negotiated agreements. Um, and before I would open it up for a motion, um, I would like to see if ICEA President Brady Shook would like to make a few comments. Yeah, uh, thank you, President Malone, I would. Um, I would just start by saying to uh, Superintendent Degner and to the board and then the team here, uh, thanks for what I thought was a transparent process and a robust discussion and engagement strategy as we, you know, understood better our financial realities that we face this year. You know, Superintendent Degner made several videos. I think that they are viral as far as I, as I know. Just really explaining things. I think that's a step that I would doubt any superintendent uh, took. We engaged, um, Assistant Superintendent Ramey and I engaged with different employee groups. Uh, we had a webinar. We were consistent with our messaging. And that really did make all the difference in a tough financial year. It's a better process than I've seen in the district uh, since I've been here. So huge thanks to that. Um, I think it illustrates our strong collaborative partnership, and I think that's the foundation for the success that we see uh, tonight in these negotiated agreements. The conversations that we have during the closed bargaining sessions are really a byproduct of a year-long conversation that we have that helps us to make, and I'll steal Assistant Superintendent Courtmeyer's phrase here, to make Iowa City a destination district. So we, um, on behalf of all of the groups, I would let you know that they felt respected, uh, they felt valued. Um, so a huge shout out, you know, Assistant Superintendent Ramey is the chief negotiator. I know that also Chief Human Resources Officer uh, Nick Proud led several of the uh, procedures and processes around the group, so thanks to him. Uh, to the board members who served, of course, a huge thank you. And, um, of course, I have to say to CFO Leslie Finger, just a huge, you know, thank you. He and I go back and forth. He's very nice to me with all of my <laughs> questions and his answers, so he's quite kind, which I appreciate on a personal level. So uh, just thanks to him. So we um, thank you for this. We, of course, you know, encourage you to vote yes on these. We feel like these are um, you know, a really good step in making this district uh, even stronger than it is today. So thank you. Thank you. And be again, before I open it up to receive any motions, I would allow directors to make any comments um, on the negotiated agreement. Oh. Look at me. Um, I, yeah, I just appreciate the process. I, you know, Brady, you said it well. This is ongoing communication. Um, I, you know, if I can uh, be a little controversial here, I hope this in, inspires more of our employees to um, maybe think about joining our uh, uh, professional organizations that represent them. I think that um, the work on their behalf is strong, and, and um, I would like to see more folks um, join in that effort. I, I would agree with that, uh, uh, JP. And I, I wanna really thank uh, Brady and the other union representatives who were at the negotiating table, as well as all of the uh, association members uh, in the district for uh, being a collaborative uh, partner that has at, in your hearts the best interest of students in the district as we uh, work out through work through our financial um, uh, issues. Um, <clears throat> the uh, one of the things that I was most uneasy about in running for the school board was that I didn't know exactly how to work with unions, um, and you guys have made it really easy to learn how to do that. So I really appreciate it. Great. I will just close out by saying um, I definitely appreciate the relationship that we have with um, ICA as well as the rest of our unions um, and the trust, mutual trust and respect that's shared. So thank you so much. And with that, I would entertain a motion for the negotiated agreement between the ICA and the ISSD, I'm sorry, ICCST for the teachers. I move that we pass the negotiated agreement between the ICEA and the ICCSD for teachers, 23-24 school year. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Board Secretary Coven ready to vote. Online voting is open.
All votes have been cast and the motion carries with all directors voting in favor. Next up, I would entertain a motion for the negotiated agreement between the ICEA and the ICSPPA for physical plant employees for the 2023-24 school year. Director Malone, would it be appropriate to ask that we um, accept these I all as a group? On one. Yes, we can do okay. that. I, I move that we approve the negotiated agreement uh, between ICEA uh, and ICCSD or ICA and ICSPPA for physical plant employees, between ICA and ICCSD for paraeducators, <coughs> between the ICSNSA and ICCSD for nutrition service employees, and the agreement between the ICSUA and ICCSD for school year secretaries for the 23 24 school year. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Board Secretary Coven, whenever you're ready, take your time. I'm sorry, who was the second? Charlie, Charlie. Uh, Director East Ham. Thank you. Online voting is open. All votes have been cast and the motion carries with all directors voting in favor. And the last action item of tonight is the Gun Violence Awareness Day resolution. Um, it's posted on the agenda, but I also forwarded everyone a copy. And um, I, I would just encourage, if possible, for us to spread this information to our families um, as well as letting them know that um, responsible gun owners can contact the Johnson County Sheriff's Office for gun locks to ensure that with summer coming and so many more kids will be at home and in other people's homes to ensure that uh, you're securing your weapons as well as possible. And those are free of charge. And I double checked with them, he has plenty. So anyone listening can contact him and stop, actually stop down between eight and five to pick up any gun locks that's needed. Um, I would open it up for further discussion, comments. Hearing none, I would entertain a motion. I move that we pass the 2023 Gun Violence Awareness Day resolution. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Board Secretary Coven, we are ready to vote. Online voting is open. I'm a yay. Thank you. All votes have been cast and the motion carries with all directors voting in favor. Next up is agenda setting for our first meeting in June. And it's a regular scheduled meeting, and I see all of the normal standing items. Superintendent Degner, it looks like there's an annual asset protection report. Any other presentations? Yeah, and if it would be acceptable to you guys, I might uh, need to let you know those uh, through the week or through the agenda setting process with the president and vice president. We have a few things in the parking lot. We've talked about math. We've talked about mm -hmm. equitable grading practices. Green Ribbon Schools, Save Funds. So there's a few of those that over the course of the summer here, we'll want to, I'll want to take some time with the team to talk about strategizing and plan those out for June and July. So we will hit some of those parking lot items. I'm not sure exactly what we'll turn, turn around here yet for the 13th. It'll kind of probably depend what the next 10 days has in store here for us as we close the year. But those would be some of the items we'll be hitting at the next few meetings. So if there's something in particular you guys really need to see next meeting, uh, I'm happy to listen to that and plan for that too. I do wonder if um, we had some community commenters about the preschool program, and I know that the feedback we got is that the cities wanted to wait till the legislative session ended, which it has, thank goodness. Um, can we direct you to re-engage, Matt, and begin those preschool uh, discussions again and, and get some movement with that? Yes, we had a brief conversation with the city managers uh, here a week or two ago. Um, 
uh, so we've communicated some with them, haven't necessarily communicated again with the elected officials, uh, but we can definitely uh, re-engage that. And we've continued to meet with that community child care coalition uh, with some of the concerns around um, creating a child care void in the community and trying to head that off, looking at the goal of still trying to create that uh, universal access for four-year-olds. So we certainly can do that and um, could even potentially turn around an update for the 13th. Quick one. Um, maybe get a status on the middle middle school construction stuff. Oh sure. And any other like current mm -hmm. construction yeah. that's going on. That would I be just, great. Yeah, the public likes to know too because you know we drive by it all the time, so it's just mm -hmm. nice to know where we are. Yeah, man, you put all those container classrooms in the Liberty High parking lot, and I got like 800 questions from yeah. people that drive by them because I mean it's little stuff because they think that maybe those classrooms are going to Liberty and what's going on but that's why nobody no, saw the swoosh they just saw the yeah. container classroom yeah, yeah. I, similarly you know if you have a kid that goes to Southeast and that's why it's good like we're mm -hmm. you know we see these schools all the time it just it does it it looks you know pretty bad people and, it, know. and people don't know like we know what is happening so I, I know I've Told, uh, told, said this before, but it'd be great if we had some images really. Um, They're on the way. Okay. They're on the way. Working on it. Yeah. Oh, oh, are they? Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so would that be possible for maybe? Yeah, I think Dwayne misses us anyways. So yeah. oh, I don't, okay, I don't great. Know, Jeff Dwayne probably can handle it, but um, <laughs> there might be some other construction efforts. So I'll talk to Jason, Jeff here, and see what we want, need to do. Tell Dwayne we'd like a really lengthy PowerPoint. Don't. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> Yeah. Are there any other Happy to oblige. Don't. Uh, Ruthina, I have listened carefully to the presentation by the Latinos for Education mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. group. Uh, I've known Marcel Hurtado for 10, 15 years now, working with the Center for Worker Justice and, other, and for other groups too. And uh, I've also heard her saying the same things uh, for those Intervening, uh, intervening years about uh, issues with the district that she talked about tonight and other members of the group talked about tonight. And I don't fault us from not, for having that conversation being continuing, uh, Matt. I think uh, we, are, uh, we are now in a better position to respond to it than we have been in the past. Um, so, uh, and we can, you can go th down the points that she raised and the, how we could respond to them. So I wonder if, uh, Ruthina, if we could um, <coughs> include in a work session or a, a discussion item uh, the uh, issues that were raised by that group uh, this evening. Uh, Mark, uh, you may have a better idea about how to proceed than I'm describing here. Yeah, I was going to say it could be an equity update where we talk about accessibility, mm -hmm. and it wouldn't just apply to um, the Latinos group, as right. you can imagine. Any any groups that are dealing with communication issues in large part due to language. Yes. And so we'll my that question that is, second can, meeting. okay, how yeah. much time was needed? Second meeting yeah, that's or first meeting in July to give you guys enough time to um, gather whatever information or yeah, we resources. usually do the second uh, the second meeting month, like tonight, the equity update. So we'll just slot it in for that second meeting in June. We'll be able to get some information. We may not have solutions to all those, but I think you know discussions about some of them or some limitations on what solutions might look like. But um, obviously, we have a willingness to try to work through those and, and want to be responsive. So be good. You know, one thing they didn't bring up that I just think it's worth us always um, checking in on is how we do translation services and how that you know because I know there's. Um, uh, cost in person, a phone, is it working? Uh, um, and you know, obviously some languages that a lot of folks speak like Spanish or Arabic or Chinese perhaps in the district, uh, but then also maybe some of our families that are speaking languages that are far less known, you know, that, that it, you know, I would just like to know. I mean, I've had <laughs> students who don't speak any language anyone knows, and I just wanna know, you know, just how we do um, with those kinds of things. So just thinking about translation services too. Great. <coughs> All right. Good. And uh, I, I might uh, ask uh, uh, <coughs> Director Pilcher Hayek if uh, we could invite members of the uh, Latinos group uh, to come to that session and Matt, if we could arrange some kind of uh, <coughs> interpretation. 
released in Spanish. Why don't we just think about, um, they, they would also probably just provide us with a, a checklist that they could, you know, give us something. In fact, we can reach out to a few different groups mm -hmm. about what challenges they're experiencing with any of these accessibility issues. I, again, we're doing a lot of things. That's what we'll learn about at the meeting. But maybe getting it in, in writing so that we're not picking one group over another is all I'm all right. thinking. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. I agree. Thank you. <coughs> all right. And before I adjourn the meeting, um, I would just ask everybody to humor me as friends and stay for a few minutes um, after the meeting has ended. Thank you. So with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, the meeting has officially ended. I just want to make that clear. If anybody has to leave, please feel free to. But I want to take this time because this is the last meeting that Deputy Superintendent Amy Courtmeyer will be with us. And we're not going to let her leave without us sharing um, our farewell, as some people call it, our roasting. None of that will happen. But I want to open it up to um, other friends up here directors if they would like to wish you well. I know today's not your last day in the district, but it's your last day formally in front of us, or informally, because it's not in a meeting. Well, I remember one of the first times I talked to you, Amy, it was a long time ago, and discovered that you had taught at an Aldine in Houston, which at a school that my daughter was teaching at, and I just know how what a challenging school that was, and I thought, you go, Amy, that's awesome, you have that experience, and um, you know, I've just really appreciated working with you over the years, so thank you so much. I would, I, I've worked with Amy for uh, about 10 years, or uh, maybe a little bit less, I guess, but I came in, you know, on fire a few times, as you might imagine, <laughs> and, um, and Amy, you always just were so respectful. You, you really set such a good tone for parents that come in who might be real fired up um, or people that just have a really um, difficult situation they're dealing with. I really respect that. Also, your attention to detail. Um, it's not easy to have. It's easy to get um, sort of laxed about it. You never do. You're always on top of it, and we have to have that when we're running a system this complicated. So professionally, I respect you. But besides that, I love you, and I can't believe you're leaving. <laughs> um, I'll say um, some things I really uh, appreciate, uh, Maka said, attention to detail, but really data-informed um, and, and, and student-centered. And I've never felt that, uh, that you're separate from that. I know, you know, sometimes I think when we're looking at these 30,000-foot views, it, it, you can lose sight of that these are kids and these are people that we're talking about and I never once got the sense that you ever lost sight of that and so um, I really appreciate that uh, Lynn Mar is very lucky to have you I mean I it is bittersweet I hate that you're leaving but I I'm also excited for your opportunity to be a leader um, a superintendent in your own right because um, certainly uh, you're going to bring a lot to that district so I wish you the best except maybe like when we play them in football then I'll still be rooting <laughs> for Iowa City thank you for everything Amy, I've just been uh, so privileged to get to know you um, as a professional and a little bit as a person. Um, it is so impressive how you center our students and our staff and everything that you do. Um, and it's just you've become a person that I can just listen to and trust and know that your decisions are thoughtful um, and have the best interest of the district. Uh, at heart, so it's a huge loss for us. We are gonna miss your voice at the table and in this room and, and other places, uh, but I'm really excited for you personally uh, for this next big journey, um, and I wish you good luck, and I will see you in November at the conference. <laughs> uh, building upon Elisa's co comment about your, this is a huge loss for the district, um, I really wish you weren't going. Uh, I know it professionally, it, it works out for you, probably for the best. And Lenmar will certainly benefit, those kids up there will benefit from your being the superintendent there. Uh, I have been totally blown away by your co comprehensive understanding of MTSS. 
a concept which I am still struggling with. Uh, and, um, and so, but uh, your ability to assess what an institution, what a system, you know, needs to try to follow uh, at every individual level, individual within that system, is is um, is uh, is um, uh, compelling. And uh, I, I hope you'll continue to to pursue that, <coughs> since as a superintendent, as we know by watching poor Matt over here from day to day, you get dragged around to do all kinds of different things. So. He's fine. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, I know he is, right? But, but he still gets dragged around to do all kinds of different things. So, um, I, I hope I hope you do well, and I hope this, and I hope uh, you find colleagues to work with to make this state return to its uh, past glory as a stalwart of public education. I will keep it short and sweet. Amy, you know, I'm a firm believer in leaving a place better off than what you found it. And I truly, truly believe you are doing that with us. Um, so thank you for all of the heart, soul, sometimes maybe frustration <laughs> poured into our district. I remember when I was running for school board some six, feel like an eternity ago, and you were so kind to, I think we ended up meeting for like an hour and a half, I don't know, but um, I learned a lot from you that day, and I have appreciated um, the respect and the honesty and sincerity sincerity that you have presented um, to the do not do that, you're gonna make me cry, um, <laughs> that you have given to um, this district. Uh, you, you really have been professional in moments that I probably would have lost my mind with some of the things I've seen at the board table, but um, I think that goes to the character in, that you have and that Lenmar is extremely lucky to have you, and I know you're going to do well, and I'll see you in November as well, and I wish you nothing but the best. So I don't know if you want to say a few things or... Thank you. Yay, Amy. Thanks for hanging out with me at that non meeting tonight, friends. Have a great evening. Get home.